Hello, this is Jeffrey Cranford, president of Lynx Players International, again with some of our Israeli friends. Now, obviously, they've been with us for um, uh, about the last couple of days. We've had a lot of great interaction, and uh, I've, I've had the opportunity to hear Erz's story, but uh, Dr. Saref, who's the president here of ICB, is just going to give you a little bit of a taste of how it began for him to come to Jesus. Um, tell us about that, Erez. Yeah, well, uh, I come from a heritage of Babylonian Jews. These are Jews that were in the first temple diaspora and uh, stayed in Babylon until for 2,500 years. But my parents and uh, me, born in Israel, and growing up in Israel heard nothing about Jesus. We refer to it as Jesus being the best kept secret <laughs> in the <laughs> Jewish world. Uh, I heard the gospel from Gentile Christians uh, after my military service at age 22 and they caused me to jealousy that started my spiritual search eventually i became uh, a disciple of jesus now uh doctor i mean when when we're talking about moving from a place of believing in jesus to actually putting yourself in a position where you say we're going to stand up for jesus in the nation and actually begin to train leaders what were the origins of israel college of the bible well i thought i was the first and only jewish believer since the time of <laughs> paul not knowing anybody else but I was so excited about uh, Jesus that I started telling my family, my friends, everybody else that I met. Um, and eventually as the Lord opened doors for me for education and getting to know people, um, I joined a very humble vision of training Israeli believers as they started to come in larger numbers. Uh, the need for leadership training has become a central thing in the Israeli church. And so this is uh, how we got to this place. And something as simple as getting a New Testament, it was just, uh, it's virtually mm -hmm. impossible in Israel. We we have such a skewed view, I think, in the West, where we could go to any street corner, we get them free, people passing them out for free, they're everywhere, and yet it's so difficult to get that, and mm -hmm. then to take it the next step and actually be trained is something significant. It is true, and we make sure through our ministry that people have access to either physical printed uh, New Testaments or audio, video, um, you know, text on your iPhone or whatever it is. And uh, so that's part of what we do. But as more people are coming to know the Lord, Jewish people and Arabic people, mm -hmm. we are taking them on a discipleship trail to train them, to tell their families, to tell and to teach others as well. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, OneForIsrael.org, which mm -hmm. uh, we'll have and you can see here on the, on the print here. Give us a feel for what that's like and what the purpose of that is. Well, as, as the Bible College continued to grow, and we still are doing the traditional things of a Bible College, but in addition, we've become heavily engaged. The Lord has led us to be heavily engaged in, in evangelism, right. particularly through media. And then we started adding more things, um, like we're producing the Christian magazine to, in Hebrew to Israelis. Uh, we do food pantry for Holocaust survivors. Wow. We do all those different things, and so we put it under an umbrella called One for Israel. So it's actually a synonym for Israel College of the Bible. It is. So as, we're, as you're looking on into the future, what, what can you see? What's, what's the Lord put on your heart? Five, 10, 15, and maybe even beyond your own tenure mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. president of the college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we really believe that time is coming to lift the name of Jesus mm -hmm to a very public place in Israel. As I said, it was in a place of, you know, not even talked about. Right. Now, more people are hearing about Jesus, but we believe the next step is just really broadcasting the name of Jesus um, to a much more significant place. And so we are already looking at a different, much, much larger campus containing everything that we're doing now, only on a much larger and more public scale. And I'll tell you right now, as uh, you know, our partnership, especially in my region here in the Coachella Valley, we've really sought to partner. It's part of our acrostic, actually, with links is kindling compassion for the poor and needy. Now, often we think of those who don't have clothes and food, but poor and needy can also, in very significant ways, mean spiritually mm -hmm. poor and needy. And so it's a big part of evangelism and sharing the gospel is a big part of our mission. And to do so, in the very place with the very ethnic group of our Savior who so changed so many of our lives is a great honor and a great mm -hmm. privilege. And I look forward to years 
to come in the future. And by the way, you can always go to linksplayers.com. There's a place, we have a, something called the Spiritual Emergence of Israel Fund, and you can actually have the opportunity, should you desire to do so, and give into that fund through National Christian Foundation, and we then uh, directly support emergence of spiritual belief all over Israel. So, Doctor, we're, I, I would love our relationship, like I was telling Thomas and Seth and, and Aton, we all have a vision to maybe 20, 25 years and no telling what God's going to do in Amen. the coming years. So, right. love you, brother, and look forward to uh, see what God's going to do in the future. Thank you, Jeffrey. Very, very mutual.